Welcome to God of Glory, Kings of Honor Ministries. My name is Rod James. I appreciate you joining us today. We're going to be looking today at Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 14, and I want to speak to you about the blood-washed multitude. By way of introduction, I want to tell you that the word to or into in Greek is eis. It's E-I-S. Out of in Greek is ek or from in the King James Version. An example of this is in Romans 1.17. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In other words, God reveals his righteousness to us from his faith being poured into our faith. We understand his righteousness by faith. We understand his righteousness as we are, as we become a Christian and as we progress in our Christian life and learn more and more about God, his righteousness is revealed from faith to faith out of faith into faith keep this in mind as we progress through this message salvation is revealed to sinners so they can be saved righteousness is revealed to the saved so they can be holy Romans 12 1 and 2 says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The blood-washed multitude. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 14. John says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts and fell down before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, you know, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 7, 9. A great multitude that couldn't be quickly counted, perhaps not in a lifetime. It said no man could number them. A multitude so large that you would die before you finish counting it. From every end of earth, every ethnicity, every language, equality is offered in salvation. Equity is not. There will be a very different outcome for the saved and the lost. Not everyone will be rewarded the same. Those that are saved will go to heaven those that are lost will go to hell those that are saved and actually serve the Lord Jesus Christ and witness to others and prayed for others and supported ministries and supported missions and did things like that will receive a greater reward equality in salvation it's a free gift offered to all, but not the outcome 
being the same for everyone. We stand before the Lamb, before the throne, before the Lamb. This is a reoccurring theme that we keep seeing for those that have departed earth and are in heaven while the tribulation's going on. Luke chapter 21. Again, I've mentioned this several times in the last five or six messages, but it's important to sink it into your mind. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Jesus says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with overeating and drunkenness and cares of this life. He said, Guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your soul as to what's important. So that day comes upon you unawares. He said, if you're dull of hearing and you're dull of heart and you're dull of mind spiritually, you won't see it coming. You won't recognize it. For as a snare, as a trap, shall it come upon all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. God's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've repeated that verse over and over. We're not on God's calendar for wrath. Our wrath has already been dumped on Christ on the cross when we received him as our Savior. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, before the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where this numberless multitude, this blood-washed multitude, that's where they are right now, standing before the Lamb, clothed in white with palms in their hands for worship. Just like the people lined the streets when Jesus entered Jerusalem, and they were singing Hosanna to the Son of God. They knew who he was, but then they turned away. They were afraid because of the Romans. They were afraid because of the Jewish religious leaders. They knew who he was. In verse 10 of Revelation chapter 7, the multitude cries with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. Now, that's not saying that he needs to be saved, obviously. So what does it mean? Salvation is ascribed to him because our salvation comes from him. He paid for it. He gave it to us. It's his plan of salvation. He's the one that was sacrificed on the cross to pay for it our sin. He's praised for saving us. He's on the throne and he never left it. A lot of people act like that throne's up for debate. It's not up for debate. It's his throne. And unto the Lamb it says in verse 10, Salvation to our God which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. John 129, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. We're in the midst of a worldwide tribulation, a worldwide judgment. Why would our hearts not be troubled? Because we're not there. That tribulation, that judgment, that end time horror show is not for us. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also, and where I go you know, and the way you know. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in heaven. Jesus is preparing for us a place in heaven. He's not coming back without us. We leave first in the rapture. And then years later, we come back with him. He's preparing our eternal home in heaven. In John or in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 11 it says and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell down before the throne on their faces and worshiped God the angels surround the throne the angels surround the elders the angels surround the four beasts and the angels fall on their faces and worship God. That is a place of perfect protection, perfect holiness, perfect righteousness, and they know who is to be worshipped. They know who is the Lord and who is the King. In Revelation chapter 7 verse 12, they worship God for everything except salvation because that's a human thing. Angels don't get saved. Angels were created perfect. One third of them fell. These are the two thirds that did not fall. Salvation was for mankind. Jesus became a human and died on the cross to save mankind. Those who will receive that salvation. And what do they say? They say, Amen, truth, blessing, all praise be to God. All glory be to God. All wisdom be to God. All thanksgiving, all honor, all power. That word power there is different than the word all might. Power is dunamis in the Greek. It's a miraculous abundance of ability. It is unlimited ability. All might is iskis. It's an unlimited forceful might. The difference is in authority or brute strength. You know, a, a, a little five foot seven hundred and twenty pound man could be the owner of a company and he has all authority but one of his workers is six five three hundred pounds and could almost lift that building that's all might he has both God has all authority all miraculous ability and all powerful might he, he is unlimited God All those things, praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He has no rival. He has no equal. You know, there are not many different gods. There are not many different beings worthy of worship. There is only our God. Our God. All the rest are fake gods. Satan's a fallen angel. Other religions have made up gods. Our God knows history ahead of history. And he tells us about it all through his book. He knows scientific and medical discoveries centuries before they happen. And we've gone through those before. I'm not going to do it again today. But there's things in the book that no man could ever possibly have known. Because they hadn't been discovered yet. 
In verse 13, one of the elders asked, Who are these in white robes? Where did they come from? And John says, Sir, in verse 14, you know. John wasn't so sure. He says something very important that we need to keep in mind. There's a lot of people that believe that the church goes through the tribulation or the church goes through half the tribulation. That's not true. But they get that idea from this verse because they don't understand the context in which it's being said in. John says, Sir, you know. He's, the angel tells him, the messenger tells him, one of the elders says, These are they which came out of great tribulation. They say, see, they were in the tribulation. They came out of the tribulation. But Revelation 3.10 says, I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. That's that word, ek, again. I will keep you out of it. You won't ever be in it. I'll keep you out of it. So how can these two things match up? Out of, in verse 14 of our text, is ekbalo in the Greek. It means to eject, to bring forth, to cast out, to drive out, to pluck out, and to send away. This is not going through it. This is like surfing ahead of a wave. You're being kept out of the wave by the surfboard and by the momentum of that wave. You're coming out of that wave, but you never touch it. You're never in it. Now, I know they go through the pipeline sometimes in a wave and stuff, but I'm just talking about staying out ahead of it. You come out of that. You stay ahead of that, and that's what happens with us. We will be snatched out. We will be translated, transferred, snatched up, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The word caught up there, that phrase is harpazo in the Greek, is rapturo in Latin. It means to be snatched away, to be plucked up. Just like this word means to be plucked out. Like by a raptor, by a bird of prey that comes down and snatches you up and takes you away. That's what he's saying here. These came out from before the great tribulation. These missed it. These were pulled out. They were plucked out before it ever happened. This is not going through it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. I just quoted it to you. I want to read it to you again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The comfort comes in, we won't be judged, but removed before the judgment. There's no wrath being poured out on us. Our sins have already been paid for. We are completely innocent in God's eyes because when he looks at us, he sees the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross and our payment for sin, and he says, not guilty. Not guilty. First Thessalonians 3.13 To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. When he comes back, he comes back with us. I've said this nine million times. Don't get tired of it. You can't come back if you haven't left. He isn't coming back at the second coming to get us. He comes back at the rapture to get us. That's the first part of the second coming. He takes us out before the wrath hits this planet. We are the blood-washed multitude standing before the throne. We are the ones that are there. We're the ones that have been saved by the blood. We're the ones that when it says he comes back with all his saints, we're some of those saints. He's talking about me in that verse. He's talking about every born-again Christian in that verse. We're going to be following him, coming back, at the second coming. We have washed our robes. We're the blood washed multitude. They used to perform a trick in Sunday school classes for smaller children and they would have in a, a, a clear glass container dirty water and then they would put a red solution down in it and I don't know what either thing wore it was but when you put the red solution down in it it made the water in the glass container completely clear. The, the chemical composition of the two things together cleared the water up. And that was an example they use as to how the blood of Christ can cleanse us, make us completely forgiven. How can our robes be washed white with blood because those robes represent our righteousness. They represent our holiness that we have none of our own, but one applied to the blood. When the blood is applied to our lives, those robes that represent our sinful lives become white as snow. We are the blood-washed multitude that stands before his throne praising him for everything he's ever done for us all praise all glory all wisdom all thanksgiving all honor all power and all might be unto our god forever and ever amen we washed our robes by receiving christ they're made white by his shed blood because we're completely forgiven. And we are giving him thanks for that at this moment and throughout all the rest of eternity. In closing, Isaiah 118 says, Come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That word reason there is yaka in Hebrew. It means to decide together, to debate together, to be right together. Well, God's always right. He's inviting you to understand his righteousness, his plan of salvation. He's inviting you to come and reason with him. He's got an offer for you. Bring your sin to me. I'll apply the blood to it and it'll disappear. All the guilt will disappear. All the pain. All the shame. All, all of what you're 
guilty of will be completely forgiven. God will no longer hold you accountable for what you did because the price has been paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool because the shed blood of Jesus Christ paid for every bit of it. And we will forever thank him in heaven for it. Would you bow with me for a closing prayer, please? Father, we thank you so much that you paid for our sins. That Jesus' death on the cross, his shed blood, was the perfect one-time sacrifice for my sins and the sins of every person that's ever lived. And if we come to you and we reason with you and understand that you want to pay for that, that though we offended you, though we sinned against you, you're willing to pay for it. If we come to understand that, that's where salvation is. I want to invite you just now, if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Follow me in a prayer something like this and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I thank you that your shed blood can make my sins as white as snow and as white as wool. I thank you for that. I receive that just now. I want you to be my Savior, and more than that, I want you to be my Lord. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. I want to learn your word. I want to pray with you daily. I, I want to come to understand what it means to be a, a Christian, a Christ-like one. I want to live my life according to how you want us to live it. I receive you as my Lord and Savior just now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I uh, went back and looked at some of my previous messages from weeks and months ago, and uh, they are continuing to grow. So I appreciate you sharing them. We, uh, we want to reach more and more people with the gospel message and help people to understand what time we're living in right now and how close we are to the end of all things. And we have to be ready on a daily basis to be ready to be taken in the rapture because the tribulation time, the time of God's wrath poured out on this planet is just around the corner. It's, it's so close. We have to be prepared for it. Please share these messages on whatever social media you may be on with your family and friends. And uh, we'll appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week to conclude Revelation chapter 7. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen.